Okay, hopefully we are live. Yes, we are live. 15 minutes late, but thank you guys so much for your patience. Uh, I had a lot to do today. I was uh, working on some projects for YouTube Montreal, lots of cool things coming up. And so welcome back. So if you guys are new to my channel, it's Heather Boyd Wire. I usually do a weekly live stream. Uh, called Wire Lady TV. On uh, I do it on YouTube once a week, Wednesdays at nine. Last week I was not available because I was at a YouTube Montreal event, and this week I was planning another YouTube Montreal event. Uh, it's actually a really exciting art show coming up, so I was working on that. So maybe I'll um, share some links on Facebook and stuff. So we have a couple people hopping on. We have Cat. We have Rainbow Unicorn. Hi guys. So sorry I'm late. I had a little bit of stuff to do. Plus, I'm still working out the glitches with this, um, uh, how do you say, the technology. And I just realized I don't have anything on the screen, so I'm going to start putting some stuff on the screen. And uh, there is a little bit of a delay, so let me just get it set up. And then I'm going to try not to look too much at the screen because there is a delay between what I see and what you guys see. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to check it's not too blurry. It's not like super excellent, but it's a little better than last week because last week um, I was using some other software and it was really noisy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually push the screen up so I don't see it so much. I won't be so distracted and that way I could see your comments. So we have, we have Deb is on and we have Robin and uh, Joey. Awesome. That's fantastic. So thank you guys. That's awesome that you're hopping on. I'm going to move this up so I can see your comments. And um, what I'm going to do today is something a little bit different. I'm going to show you guys some stuff that I made in 1989. So in 1989, I was selling jewelry on the streets of Montreal. And when I first started, I was actually making some hand-painted buttons. And I did, uh, at one point, I think, show you guys some of those things. And something that sort of uh, transitioned me out of that was actually when I started making wire stuff. So I sh here, I'll show you a piece first. This was a piece that I made with a cork and wire twisted around. So this was, um, I started experimenting with mixed media, like mixing wire with hand-painted items, like I was doing just hand-painted items before. And um, I just picked up some wire at the hardware store uh, one day and just went for it. So, and then by chance, um, at the same time that I was doing that, I met uh, my husband who was making wire bicycles and so he's the one that really got me started doing wire but before I met him I had actually started making wire stuff which is kind of cool so we have Barbara here hey Barbara how are you so you guys um as usual if I get distracted and don't see all your uh, comments please uh, uh, have a conversation between yourselves I love it when you guys do that so what I'm going to do first is just show you some of the stuff that I made in 1989. This is a long time ago. And then I'm going to make a couple of pieces to show you guys how I did it. And I see that my computer is heating up a lot. So I might try to lift it up a little bit. And hopefully, I'm going to just lift it up a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to just bring my screen down a bit to make sure that I'm still in focus. So we'll see what happens to that. Oh yeah. So I might have to move that up a little bit and we'll see what it does. Good. So what I have is this was something really fun that I did. It's um, some earrings and they're just made with little rings and they're actually wrapped with uh, silk. So I was hand painting uh, silk uh, at the same time that I was uh, making the hand painted buttons. So these were little scraps from my, uh, my hand painted silk. And what I did was I just wrapped them around the ring to make like these earrings. So those are cool. So that's wrapped with silk, hand painted silk and wire. So those are those. And we have Jeanette coming on. Hey Jeanette, how are you? So you guys, yeah, like I said, just please feel free to chat away in the, um, in the chat line and so here's some other funky things that I made I would pick up things at garage sales and stuff so these are like little pieces of bamboo wrapped with wire with some little um, 
uh, what do you call this stuff, like just little silk uh, hanging underneath. And then in the earring, um, along with the earring uh, sort of subject, I made these ones. So these are like little rings wrapped with leather, and then I added beads on top. So these are kind of fun, just kind of simple ideas. And I had no jewelry training at the time. I was just kind of teaching myself as I went. And then here's one that I did was just a bangle, one of those uh, metal bangles, and I wrapped it with leather and just a random bead. So here's a couple of bracelets like that. And the leather is kind of fun. You can actually kind of sculpt it. And I know of people that actually use leather and sculpt it around a form and it makes like kind of a mask form. And I, I know sort of in the 70s and 80s, there's, those were popular. But there's a lot you can do. And these are just scraps of leather that I would have got at a garage sale or a bazaar. And then when I was moving out of, like I, I would do like a, something like this, like a, just a very basic kind of leather. This one doesn't even have a metal form underneath. And then I made a very kind of primitive hook on the end of that. This one was made with electrical wire. So it's like a three strand electri electrical wire that I pulled apart and braided. So that one's kind of cool. And this is just wire that I, I think I did like a basic shape of the, of the bracelet. And then I wound it around in kind of a spring formation to do the rest of it like that. And then this one too, just more electrical wire. And probably I was using brass wire at the time. There's a lot more choice of wire these days. And then this one was just a funny, like I had actually taken my bicycle apart to make a sculpture. And so this one was just made with old bike parts and leather. It's, it's a ring. Like, I don't think I'd ever wear it. Maybe it's a man size ring, but uh, that was kind of funky too. So there was that. And then this was a random one. I think that was an earring. So it's just like a hoop with a little bead hanging down. So probably what I'll do is I'm going to take photos of these and put them in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club on Facebook so you guys can get a closer look at how they look. But what I thought I'd do was just kind of show you what I did. So I had, these are even these old bangles that I had uh, bought like years ago. I think you can buy them at Ardan and Claire's and all kinds of things. And here's Denise hopping on. I, I love them. And Robin says, very nice. And Rainbow Unicorn says, so cool. Thank you guys so much. That's just awesome. And so here's a couple of rings. So let's just go for it. And let's just try to wrap them. So I actually have a bag of leathers. So what you want to do is get some leather that's not too thick. So I'm just going to see what I have. If I don't have any that's good, I'm going to maybe use some, uh, I have some fabric. It's actually hemp fabric. So I could use something like that as well. Uh, the hemp fabric, I think I also just got some scraps of it somewhere, but I'd like to use a color that's maybe will show up a little bit more. Why don't I use the purple? Uh, unless I have a leather that's not too thick, but these leathers I have are all pretty thick. I think I won't, this one's not too bad. Actually, let's use this one. We'll try this leather. It's not too, too thick. Um, I even had an old boot in there that I cut across, which is pretty funny. So let's just cut a strip of leather and we'll just go for it. We'll just see how it goes. And I'm just, as I'm doing this, I'm even thinking that I could, uh, I could add beads to it as well, but I think I'm just going to start very simple. So let's just cut a strand of leather. Make sure you have some good um, sewing scissors or something that you can cut it with. I'm not quite sure of the length. The length is going to depend on um, how big your bangle is. This is just sort of one of those typical bangles that you would get, like, you know how you can wear like a bunch of bangles at once as a bracelet. So we just cut that strip like that. And because it's kind of rustic, I think I'll go ahead and use this wire that I have. It's, it's sort of like a, I, they call it alpaca silver. I think I've used it before on live streams. And it's uh, it's kind of a crappy wire, but it's it's got kind of a nice right, rustic quality to it. So let's just cut a nice long piece. And don't worry if you don't cut enough because it, it's just going to, um, you can add another piece after. So this actually might be a little long, a little hard to work with. So I'll cut it a little shorter. 
And so what you want to do is just, I'm going to go for the skinnier bangles. So, and just be careful when you're working with, with it because some of these are really soft. Here's Kathy. Hey, Kathy, how are you? We're just making some wrapped um, bracelets and earrings. So based on some old stuff that I made many, almost 30 years ago. So what we're going to do is just take the bangle and then take the leather and just start by wrapping it around. It's a little tricky to get it started. And honestly, I don't remember how I did this because I did them 30 years ago, but it's something like this. And leather is very forgiving because it's soft and it actually molds to the shape that you want. And if you wet the leather, you could almost sculpt with it. And then when it dries, it's going to hold its shape a little bit. So let's go ahead. I just wrapped it around a few times. And then I'm going to just stick the wire in here. I'm going to leave a little bit of an end. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it around a few times. And you'll see it's not the most beautiful color leather, but it's kind of earthy and natural looking. And I think rather than put beads on to start, I think I'm going to just go ahead and wrap it with the leather and the wire. And so I'm just going to follow around with the wire. So I've done the leather, uh, like a few little straps, and then I'm just going to, you know what I think I'm going to do? As always, I'm just troubleshooting with you guys. So let's just go ahead and wrap the whole thing. And then I'm going to go in with the wire after. So I think that'll work. If we, As long as you've started it with the wire, let's just wrap it all the way around. We'll do the full kind of circle around. And then that way, we won't have this extra end to deal with. And I'm not quite sure how much I cut. It looks like I cut a couple feet but we're definitely not going to need it to be that long. And ideally, you should try to do this part in one long continuous piece. But if you need to, you can piece it together. You could use several pieces of leather. It's just, this gives you a basic idea of how you can do this. And it also is really cool when you do it with regular fabric. I was even thinking with ribbon, you could wrap a, a, like a ring with ribbon and do it that way. You could create your own ring out of wire. If you wanted to, you'd have to have a nice strong wire to do it with. So we're just going to come all the way around and then maybe we'll have to back this one up a little bit so it can overlap. You can always just back that up a little bit. So let's just make sure it makes a complete circle. And then when you've completely gone around, we're going to go ahead and cut it. So I'll get my good scissors. So we're going to go ahead and cut it like that. Okay, so we've gone completely around. And then I'll go ahead and just pull this wire that we started with so it's held in place. So now it's going to be completely held in place like that. And then you'll use this end probably to do the, uh, like a little loop. Say, just say we're going to do an earring, even though this is a little huge for an earring but it also might be a little small for a bracelet so if you find it's too small for a bracelet or even a pendant like often you see people do like really big uh, pendants these days so oh we see I'm, I'm missing part of this stuff but that's okay can you use memory wire um i guess you could use memory wire you um i don't know if it would really hold its shape very well if you if the leather wasn't super um if thick it might work but you could also use memory wire and just close it like so it makes a complete bangle. That would work quite well, I think. And then that way, because if it's an open memory wire thing, it might be a little bit wobbly. But let's just go up. We're going to go ahead and do it like this. And if you want at this point, you can add some beads on there. It actually might be kind of cool. I didn't bring a lot of beads downstairs, but let's just see how it's going to look if we add a few beads. So if I, this one's a um, tiger eye bead, so we can put that one on there. I think it's kind of cool with the beads. So we, And then you can always add other wire after. So there's, that's kind of cool. So we've added the, the tiger eye uh, bead. So let's add some different ones. Maybe I'll go for the more natural color ones. Here's a hematite bead. So we can add the hematite bead on there too. I like hematite beads. They're kind of... Um, 
like a metallic kind of gray. So if we put that one, and then maybe we'll even put a bigger one. This one's kind of a speckly painted bead. So we're just, when you put the beads on, just hold them in place like that, and then wind the wire around after. I do a complete wind around. This is kind of funky, actually. I think I'm, I think I'm liking this. So let's add some more beads. Here's a black one. And if you have a very small hand, this could be a good bracelet. And if not, it could just be, you can make a pendant, you can make, uh, I guess, uh, anything that you like like that out of it. So we're just going to add some more beads. And then if you're missing wire, you can always go in and add more wire after. But the, you'll see if you work with the leather, you're, it's, it's a very interesting texture. Like it's a very organic kind of texture. Yeah, I quite like it. So, uh, and it's good, you know, if you use recycled leather, then it's not sort of, uh, it's more eco-friendly if you recycle uh, bits of leather that you can get in like a, a secondhand store or a garage sale. It's, uh, it's always good to reuse and recycle. So, and then, like I said, you can also use uh, fabric. You can use hand-painted fabric. There's all kinds of things that you can use. Maybe I'll just stick a little purple glass bead on there. I'm using quite a variety of beads. And this, I've run out of space here on, on my end. So I think I'm gonna actually, I'll back, I would backtrack this one a little bit so I can add some more beads. I think just for, uh, to be quick, I'm just not going to do too much of that, but I will just grab some random beads and add them on there just to give you guys an idea how it looks. And then you can always go in after and add more beads. So we're going to just go around like that. And I'll show you what it would look like if you added, if you want to make a loop at the top to hang it as a pendant or earring. So we're going to just bend that up at a right angle. And like I said, this could be a bracelet if you had a very small hand, but uh, I think it's not even going to fit on my hand. And my hands are super small. So we're going to do it like that. And then at that point, whoops, a little bumpy. At that point, you could add more beads on there, or you can just do like a little loop. But um, if you're going to do a loop, you're just going to bend it like that. And then get your round pliers around like that and then just bend it around and then cut it off. And then that could be like a little kind of a necklace or like I said, if you, oh, you know what? It fits on my arm, huh? So this could be a bracelet. So in that case, then I wouldn't do a loop. I didn't think it was gonna fit me, but it does. That's pretty funny. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah, so. It would be a good Christmas ornament. Yeah, that's true. You could do it as an ornament. You could wind it with some uh, other kind of like shiny fabric. And Rebecca's just hopping on. Oh, sorry, you're late. Well, don't worry, Rebecca, because I was late too. So it's all good. So let's have a look at some of the other stuff. So that would be like um, a bigger one. Now, if you wanted to make a littler one like this to be more like an earring, like this one ended up being like pretty good as a bracelet. So if you want to make a little one as an earring, you can get a smaller ring like that. So let's try it with the smaller ring. And then I'm going to use some regular fabric. And let's see what we got. So and for people that are just hopping on now, I'm going to bring back some of the other pieces that I made uh, that I made before. This was a bracelet just to show you guys some of the other things I made. These are from 30 years ago. So this is like a really abstract kind of bracelet type of thing like that. And then I'm just wondering what we can do for, to wrap this. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get the, um, this is actually hemp uh, fabric. And uh, so I'm going to try something with that. So let's just take this fabric and we're going to cut it uh, in a strip. So we're going to cut it, I guess, in about a half to a three quarters length strip. We'll just cut it straight. In fact, you could cut it or you could probably rip it. Actually, it's kind of cool when you rip it because it gives it a kind of interesting frayed effect. You know what? I think I like the rip. Maybe we could do another piece like that. Let me let me try that again. Yeah, so let's just try to rip it. So we'll just cut it and then we'll rip it 
that's kind of cool because see it gives it a nice kind of frayed effect and then for this one I'll use some nicer silver wire this is more like that artistic wire not quite sure how much to do so I'll cut about 18 inches and you can always add more wire if you need I hope my arms are uh, are um, centered here my hands I still haven't after all these weeks I still haven't perfected the art of live streaming guys so I really hope that I figure it out one day what's the best technology because last week I used a webcam and I think my computer almost overheated so we're gonna just keep trying until we get it right so here's the hemp fabric it's about a half an inch piece this is just a random little ring that I had I'm not even sure where I got it but any kind of little ring would do and then so to get it started we're just going to bring this around and then just wind it and push it through and wind it around and we'll just push it through and wind it around and I think what I might do is so I don't lose my end I'm going to go ahead and just take the wire and just wind it around to hold it in place now this could even be just like a temporary hold just so it won't come off and then we'll go back to it after so let's go ahead and maybe I'll just wind it around one more time I just don't want it to unravel okay I guess you could put a little spot of glue or hot glue on there too if you want it and then basically what I'm doing is I'm just bringing it, bringing it up and then winding it through so you could actually to show you better we could just take the end and wind it into the into the ring like that if that's easier to show you guys so we'll just like wind it around I like the way it's kind of frayed with the fabric when you tear the fabric it gives a really cool kind of frayed effect and uh, this hemp fabric is so gorgeous I think my sister sent me this fabric from uh, she lives in Salt Spring Island and actually my sister's visiting me from Salt Spring Island uh, BC that's out in Western Canada and I'm going to see her on Friday in Ottawa because that's where my family is from so what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm just gonna loosen up where I did where I put the wire on here because I think it's gonna actually be easier if I remove the wire and I just overlap the ends okay because you really don't want any of the metal part showing so I've just pulled off the wire and now I'm just going to keep wrapping it around until I've covered all of the wire okay so we're just going to cover all of the wire I have a feeling I might be out of the screen now but uh, sorry about that if you guys if you're getting my back or the back of my head so now that we've completely wound it around the ring we're going to take our scissors and just cut it off like that and I'm, I'm missing all your comments I'm so sorry guys I should actually get someone to read comments for me but Mimi sometimes helps me and she's downtown so can be pretty oh you can make the prettiest bracelets with washers it's true eh? I used to do a lot of a lot of jewelry with the uh, hardware stuff like a lot a lot but I mean now I'm more specialized in wire but when I first started uh, my basically my jewelry supply store was the hardware store so and they didn't have a lot of jewelry supply stores in those days uh, when I started making jewelry like in the in the early 90s there really wasn't much available and now there's like Michaels and all kinds of things so now I've um, I've gone ahead and uh, wound the wire around the the two ends they've overlapped so now let's go ahead and just wrap the whole thing I think rather than do beads I'm just gonna do this one plane with wire and we're just gonna wrap it all the way around and then we'll we'll put some beads up at the top after we've already wound it around so we're just gonna go around I'll try to do it sort of as cons consistently as possible but it doesn't really matter if, if it's not wound exactly like evenly spaced it's not such a big deal so we'll just wind it all the way around the idea is to make sure it's nice and solid and that you don't have little ends sticking out so I generally don't use uh, glue when I make uh, jewelry you know unless it's absolutely necessary but 
you just want to make sure the wire secures everything in place. And uh, it's a little tricky to get used to um, holding the end and winding it around, but I think you could probably do a couple of practice ones and then by that time you'll get it in no problem. So we'll just keep winding around until we've completely gone around it. One more. Yeah, I cut my wire way too long. Like I think I cut for this size ring, I cut about 18 inches. So maybe 12 or 15 inches would have been enough, but I always prefer to cut too much than too little. So we've wound around the whole thing. And so now what we can do, this one, I think I want to pull it back a little bit just to get it even. So we're going to just, now we want to bend that here and then bend that up at a right angle. Hopefully you guys can see. And then take this end and bend it around. Okay, so we're going to clip one end off. And then, like you've seen in a lot of the tutorials that I've done, we have this now this end sticking up that we could bead. So we've got, that's all wound around. I'm really glad I used purple. It looks really good. And it's way too long, so I'll just trim off a little bit. And then we could look in here and see what beads we have uh, to embellish it with. I don't know if I want to use red or purple or maybe even the um, the hematite is pretty. That's my my hardest part is always deciding on what color beads to put. So we could put like a little shiny one there. Let me see how the red one looks. I don't know how good it's going to look. Oh boy, I hate this part. <laughs> this is the worst is deciding what, what kind of beads to put on. So let's try this one, the hematite. Hematite's one of my go-to ones. Maybe even just, this one's kind of nice. It's like a cat's eye bead. And let's see what else, if I have some little metal beads. You could put a little, just a little metal bead on there. Yeah, it's very simple. Oh boy, I could, I could be here all day just deciding what kind of beads to put on. Or maybe I'll put I'll put a faceted bead on there just to have a little bit of variety. So that's kind of cool. Oh, and then in that case, maybe just to keep it a little consistent, I'll put a another hematite bead if it's going to fit. I don't know if the, uh, the hole's not big enough for that one. I'll try one of these. There we go. Mm, no, that doesn't look good either. So I think I'll just stick with three beads for now. I'm missing all your comments. I'm so bad. Sorry, guys. But I'm really... Oh, you know what? I'm going to change this. I saw. I just saw a really pretty bead in here. This is like a fuchsia bead. Let's try that one. Oh, and this hematite bead's kind of wonky. Let's take that one off. We could just sit here all night and choose beads. There we go. So let's try the white one. That's a white cat's eye. And then a really pretty... Ooh, that's nice. The, the fuchsia one. And let's see if I could get one. another one of these white cat size on there. Let's try. It's not too bad. So let's just try that. So then we're going to bend it at a bit of an angle like that. And I'll get my round pliers. And we're just going to wrap it around like that. And then just bend this end around. And we're going to clip it. And then if I have some hooks, let me see if I have some earring hooks on here. Yep. I did bring some. So I have my earring hook and I'll just stick it on the hook. There we go. And there we have the wound, the little ring wound with wire and fabric. And there we go. So, oh, here we have Fleur Victon Fighting. That's a cool username. I make it look so easy. I make it look easy because I've been doing this for a very long time, like 30 years. It'll be 30 years next year that I've been doing this. I'm just going to scroll up and see. Oh, you can see me in the corner. Okay, so let me check. Let me just check that what we're doing. Oh, you're right. Like I'm way, I'm way off. Or maybe over here is better. Let me just see. Because there's a, there's a little delay, guys. So I really don't even see where I am half of the time. But now let me move these down a bit so you guys can see them. And let's have a look at what we did. And so I did this one. Basically, I really just did the two things. But the technique is there of the doing the wire wrapping. So what I'm going to do is I will 
Okay, so I can see where that is. That looks good. So let me just look up at the at the comments too to see if there's anything going on. And I don't know if you guys have any questions or anything about anything about wire art or, or anything like that. Because I definitely would I'd love to do a QA sometime, but the trouble is with this delay, I'm not quite sure the best way to do a QA. Maybe if you guys ask some questions in the in the in the group that would be great and then I could answer them. And be sure if you're not already in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers group to join. I'm so thrilled we already have 200 members in the group. It's amazing. And you guys share stuff, uh, photos of your work all the time. I get tons of ideas and I'm always so inspired by everybody in the group sharing their, their pictures. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. So let's, uh, I'm going to bring back a couple of more of these things to show people that people that are just hopping on now. So these are so this is another like wire bracelet that I would have done like many many years ago and just like with a simple clasp. I did do um I did do a pro a project a while back on how to make a it was a crocheted wire bracelet. I could link that one up below that shows how to do that little hook and everything. And then here's one of the ones from a long time ago that I made with the silk wrapped around the hoop. So that was really cool too. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of pictures of this old work that I did and I'll share it in the um, in the Facebook group. So that's going to be really cool. So, oh, Fleur, uh, Victim Fighting says, when is your anniversary of being a wire lady? Oh my goodness. So my anniversary, I guess you would say of, uh, well, you could even call it my anniversary of meeting my husband because I met him uh, August 11th, 1989. And I had just started making wire things before I met him. He was making wire bicycles and selling them on the street in Montreal, in old Montreal. And I had been making wire or um, hand painted buttons. And then I started making things like this just randomly, little wire uh, bracelets and these, uh, this type of thing, one wire bracelet. And this one with the wound, these are the older ones that I made. And Literally a week after I started playing with the wire, I met him on the street and he was making wire bikes. And so we, we connected and, and ever since then, he taught me a few things and gave me the wire. And ever since then, it just, it was meant to be because I've been doing this for almost 30 years now. And I still, I still love it. We get lots of interesting, uh, orders for different things like, uh, Tonight, when I'm done the live stream, I'm going to go up and uh, work on a, um, I'm making a Harley Davidson motorcycle out of wire for a wedding cake topper. So I'm going to, I make the, the little um, motorcycle and then my husband makes the little people that go on the motorcycle and I, um, I write people's names in them and then they put it on a wedding cake. So that's, uh, that's a lot of fun, really cool. So Rainbow Unicorn says... Uh, I like the pink. The pink earring is cool. Yeah, no, I like that one too. Can you try to make a necklace next time? Okay, well, that's a good idea. What kind of necklace, uh, what kind of necklace do you think would be good? Because I'm op I'm definitely open to suggestion if you guys want me to make some different things. And, uh, and Fleur Victon Fighting says, what a beautiful story. It really is an amazing story. I'm really, I'm really uh, very, very grateful. And Andrea says, Mrs. Heather, I made the key. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, I wish you could show us. So, but Andrea, are you in the group? Can you share them in the Facebook group? Because that would be amazing if you could share, uh, if you could share pictures. I would love to see the key. We had a lot of fun a few weeks ago making the, the, the little keys. Actually, I keep meaning to go back to the hardware store. He gave me a whole bunch of keys and was wondering what I needed them for and uh, I was explaining to him that I do DIY videos and I was making that pendant so I still have to go back to the hardware store to show him uh, what, what I created so that's one. So a choker would be nice. Okay well maybe I could do something like that. I actually have um, a couple of designs for chokers that I've done before so so how about I'll work on some ideas for necklaces and chokers and that'll be my goal for next week. We'll do uh, We'll do a choker and a necklace design and anytime you guys have other suggestions, just mention them in the group or um, you could send me a message on Facebook or uh, at my email uh, anytime. You're not on Facebook. So email me pictures at info at heatherboydwire.com. 
uh, that would be amazing. And uh, yeah, if you share it with me, Andrea, if you share pictures, I will share it in the community page. So yeah, definitely email picture and I'll send I'll I'll share it on YouTube on my community tab. So everybody will get to see your key. I can't wait. That'd be awesome. So you uh, you can just call me Fleur for short. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, usernames are tricky, eh? And you don't have a Facebook account. Oh, yeah, that's really tricky with that. A lot of people don't use Facebook. But you guys, anytime, if you're not on Facebook and you want to share pictures with me, please e email uh, them to me. And if you want me to share them with people, I'll share them on the uh, community tab on my, on my YouTube page. That would, be, that would be awesome. And of course, I have Instagram too. So if ever you want, if you're on Instagram or Twitter, you can at sign me at Heather Boyd Wire and uh, share stuff that way as well. But if you're uh, just old school and want to do email, uh, no problem. Just send me pics. So Rainbow Unicorn says maybe a wire cloth, oops, wire cloth bead necklace or chain. Hmm. Okay, using, using the cloth as well, we could do something like that. I like the emojis, Fleur. That's awesome. Good stuff. Yeah, you guys send me pictures. I would love that. And, um, and that's it. I think I'm going to sign off for now. I have a gazillion things that I'm working on. Oh, Claudia's on. I, Claudia, I didn't see you earlier. Did you just hop on? Oh, that's fun. So, Claudia, next time I see you, I'll bring these pieces to, to show you because they're, they're really fun. And some of the older pieces that I have are pretty crazy. I think they've got some pretty wild energy attached to them. And I could, I could never part with them. I keep all my older stuff uh, as well. So yeah, on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to thank you guys so much for hopping on. And uh, yeah, be sure to send me pics, pics of your work. And if you are on Facebook, I'll see you guys in the Facebook group. And we will see you next week. So yeah, thank you everybody and have a wonderful weekend and enjoy.